Hi everybody, Kevin Grady here for the Gospel According to Music. Today, another Bible translation. This is called the Net Bible, the New English Translation. Now, if you're not familiar with the Net, let me just kind of explain it to you this way. There was a website called Bible.org. They decided to, instead of paying copyright fees to a translation to do all their studies with, they would create their own translation. Now, many of these that were a part of the translation were members of the Dallas Theological Seminary there in Dallas, Texas. Well, they created with this, and this was actually the very first Bible that was edited back and forth through the Internet. And that's how they got the name, the Net Bible. They made it completely free. It was done on the Internet. You could actually download it. Now they have apps to where you can download it to your phone. You can actually even go online and read the Net Bible for yourself, check out all the notes. But Thomas Nelson, they did go ahead and do some printed versions, but Thomas Nelson started working with them and they came up with their version of the Net Bible. I'm gonna zoom in on this because I want you to see this. It says Full Notes Edition. Now there's a couple of others. There's one with limited notes and there's one that has no notes. But this is the full notes edition. I want you to see that over 60,000 translator notes, the largest set ever created, provided completely transparency to every major translation decision so that you can see in detail how they put the scriptures together. Now let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to try to do this one-handed. I wasn't going to do this, but I put it back in the box. So give me just a minute as I try to do this one-handed. Ta-da! Oh, before I put the box up, let's zoom in on this. Some of the comments. Chuck Swindoll says the Net Bible is a Bible you can trust. And one of the things I like him saying this was when they first came out, he said those notes, those wonderful notes. He was a big fan of it. Also, Joe B. Green, professor of New Testament interpretation at Fuller Theological Seminary, says this belongs within arm's reach. And then Beth Moore, it's a rare day of study that I don't consult my net Bible. Let me show you why this thing is such a, a work of beauty. First of all, this is done in the leather touch. This is the, um, or excuse me, the leather soft edition that Thomas Nelson puts out, uh, which is a vinyl cover with a paper liner inside. It is stitched, as you can see right there. And as you can tell, it's got that same strong stitch sewn binding. Here's the information, full notes. And then here's the contents about the uh, Net Bible team, kind of tells you a little bit about them to the reader. Features of the full, of the uh, Net Bible full notes. This thing is, is big, and I'll just be honest with you, it's big, and uh, here's actually the translation team who all put it together. There's more people on the other side, and then it gets into the New Testament. Now this is gonna be a little overwhelming. Boom, two verses and the rest are notes. <laughs> yeah, I told you it's a little daunting. Take a look at this, I'm gonna zoom in. The text, by the way, somebody asked me the size. Um, the actual scripture is about an eight point, excuse me, trying to do this all one-handed. Uh, it's eight point on the font, which is kind of small. And uh, it is also seven point. Actually, it's eight, one, what, eight, three fourths point. Boy, we got into the fractions here. And then uh, seven, one fourth point for the notes. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. My eyes can't do this very long because the print is just so small. But you can also do this online. So you can get it online and you can check it out that way too. But it's nice to have a hard copy. As you can see, there's also magnifying glasses you can put on here to read things better. But this gives you 
exactly why they translated the things the way they did. If you've ever wanted to study the Greek and the Hebrew but never had the time or the money to go to a seminary or to take a course in it, this will take the place of that. This, sometimes, I'll be honest with you, sometimes, and I did not go to seminary, nor did I have um, any biblical education, but I will tell you this, that sometimes some of this is a little like, what? <laughs> it's a little daunting, but let me tell you this. This will, I, I, I'm in a bunch of Bible groups, and every once in a while, somebody will say, I don't understand why the translators translated this particular word or this particular phrase. Nine times out of ten, somebody will go to the net, pull out the information from the notes, and post it in the group and said, this is why they did what they did. And it helps out greatly. It really does. As you can see, the scripture is in the center and all the notes in three columns. This, let me tell you something. This is another thing, too, you might want to understand. This is about a translation of the Greek and the Hebrew and the Aramaic. It is not teaching one man's point of view of Scripture or anything like that. This is not like a one-sided. Uh, this is not a Baptist. This is not a Methodist. This is not a Catholic. This is not. This is just translating the Greek, the Hebrew, and the Aramaic into English and why they translate it, how they translate it, what it means, what it's all about. That's what this is all. This is like a strong Bible on steroids. This is just so much information. And it helps you to understand why they translated things the way they did. This is like sitting in a room full of translators as they are trying to make sense of the Greek and the Hebrew and the Aramaic and how to convey it into English so that we can understand it better. Take a look at this one. I'm going to zoom in on this. The Hebrew active participle may be translated here as indicating past dirt of action was floating as a present dirt of flows. See, that's like right over my head. But yet there are some things that here, Hebrew, the man's being alone is not good. The meaning of good must be defined in content. Within the content of creation in which God instructs mankind to be fruitful and multiply, a man alone cannot comply. Being alone prevents the man from fulfilling the desire or the design of creation and therefore is not good. So that kind of gives you a little bit more of what that's about. Somebody asked me, is this red letter? No, it is not red letter. Very good reason why it's not. Let's go over here to the Psalms. As you can see, there's a little bit more space. Gives you a little bit more breakdown. Font is easy on the eye. Let's go over to the New Testament. Here you go, Mark. And as you can see, it's not red letter, and there's a very good reason why. It would make it too busy, too crazy. That's why they stuck with black letter. And again, it's focusing on the text and on the notes of why they translated the things the way they translated it. The soldiers forced a passerby to carry his cross. Simon of Serene, who was coming from the country, he was the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Now let's go over here. There's a U. Let's find the U in this. It's over here. place Golgotha this is from an Aramaic name see John 19 17 the place called Golgotha which is translated place of the skull this location is north and just outside of Jerusalem the hill on which 
is located, pronounced, looks much like a skull, giving the place its name. The Latin term for the Greek term, boy, I can't even pronounce that, from which the English word came Calvary is derived. So as you can see, it really breaks it down to how they translated it. I'm going to go back a little bit further. We're going to get into past revelation, abbreviations for biblical books and non-biblical literature. Trying to turn the pages here. Do not want to turn very well. General abbreviations. List of cited works. More kind of research stuff. Then you come over here to the maps. And then the back. That's actually something I'm studying in Revelation. There's a paper liner in the back. Now, I want to say this about it. There's two satin ribbons. Both sided are satin, black, and red. And I'm just going to say this. For a Bible student, teacher, pastor, this is an excellent tool. For somebody who's just new to the Bible, this would be overwhelming to them. I've been a Christian since 1970, and there are some things that are a little bit overwhelming to me. But uh, again, it's an excellent study tool. You know, as you're reading scripture, if you come across something you don't quite understand, this is a great reference. And as you can take a look on the back of the box, it kind of gives you a little bit more information about how in the world this is set up. The TN stands for Translator Notes. The SN stands for Study Notes, offer historical and cultural background. The TC is Text Critical Notes highlights from various readings found in various manuscripts. Elegantly line match design makes the, Bi uh, the Bible very easy to read. And there's again the information on the fonts and that it's also Smithsonian. So it lies flat. And that's it. Again, I'm going to zoom in on here. The price of this is $69.99, which I'm sure you can find it cheaper online. There's your ISBN. And this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful study tool. I highly recommend it. And it will help you to understand why they translated the Bible the way they did and the certain notes and how it can be read. Thank you again for joining me. If you want to, please subscribe and click that little bell there. It'll let you know any new uh, translations or any new Bibles I review here on the Gospel According to Music. Have a great day and take care.